so yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, morphic vector bundles on the fact contained curve. This is a uh, work in progress with Alex Ivanov here in the audience. And uh, so let me start. I'll start just fixing some notation. So G over QP is going to be in some connected reductive group. And uh, I'm going to fix also a parachoric model over CP. And let me start uh, with some motivation. Um, so for this part of the motivation, maybe I'll be a little bit big or extremely big. Um, so we're trying to connect kind of two stories. Um, on one side, we have a very analytic story. And uh, on the other side, we have a very schematic story. And in the analytic theory, I guess the main players are uh, this geometric object, uh, Bungi, that already appeared in uh, David Hansen's talk. So this is the small b stack uh, classifying G bundles in the fact and chain curve. And uh, we will also want to consider a second object, which is, uh, oops, sorry. Um, the stack of Stukas uh, with uh, this fancy G structure. Um, so, and I guess I'm going to put uh, some decoration here to kind of really emphasize that we're thinking in the analytic world. So these are, uh, what are these? These are uh, G bundles. Um, this version of the five and tinker that we call Y0 infinity. Together with Fermi's structure, and I'm I'm going to only work in some sense in in in, in characteristic P. So I I want to in, for for those that kind of are familiar with this stack of Stukas, I I really want the plot to always be at P equals zero. So all at P equals zero. Okay, so those are the main players uh, on the analytic side. And in, this, in the schematic side, the main players are the coded stack that I'll denote by this symbol uh, that you can, you can think of uh, just as taking the loop group and modding by phi action by the loop group itself. And, and then you also have this other stack of schematic stukas. And yeah, maybe I, I have to say what the loop group is. So let me just finish uh, writing this. Um, and yeah, so the uh, loop group takes, uh, takes spec R and uh, it gives to you um, just G of uh, the bit vectors one over P uh, of this. And the loop, positive loop group is uh, same gadget, um, except you use the mid vectors. Yeah, so here the test objects are perfected spaces, and here the, the test objects are perfect schemes. Okay, and so the motivation comes uh, from, I guess, this categorical or, or geometric local Langlands uh, that, I guess, got a boom recently. So um, I guess we have this category that I'll be super big about of the derived category of the stack of all parameters. And I guess we have over here some category that I'm going to call the analytic, which should be one version of maybe the et or the means, but it should be a version of, of taking et al sheaves on one V. And, uh, and on this side, I guess I have a schematic category um, that again, uh, I'm, I'm going to be even more big. It should be some et al sheaves on on DG. 
And I guess in the flag of Schulze, in the work of flag Schulze, there's a precise conjecture that this should, there should be an equivalence between this and this over here. And I guess uh, in, in the work of, yeah. And on this side, I guess there's a work of Xiaoyu and uh, Himoju. And others uh, kind of saying that there should also be a schematic equivalence. So there's kind of a schematically constructed local language category, and there's like an analytic, analytically constructed local language category. And if we believe both conjectures, then we should believe that these ones are also equivalent. And let me just call it with this symbol. And so maybe dream or goal. Um, are the following things. So one, we want to construct hmm? yeah, okay. So we want to construct say so directly and uh, B, we want to be explicit about it. So let me try to say something about being explicit about it. Well, this type Bungie, you can evaluate it on, uh, on some geometric point. And uh, it is a theorem of five that you can identify this with Codwitz sets. And uh, you can do the same thing uh, to the Cutwitz tag, and it, it's kind of almost by definition identified with Cutwitz set. Um, so the Cutwitz tag is a kind of like a geometric version of the Cutwitz set, a stacky version of the Cutwitz set. And uh, in particular, you got uh, for every V in VG. Uh, you get uh, Newton strata inclusions. So you have a map from um, a Newton strata. So every 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 point like this uh, will give you a strata in the stack. And uh, you get this kind of inclusion. And you also get this one. And uh, we also know more. So we also know that we have kind of canonical identifications of the following categories. So all of these categories are actually equivalent. Uh, I guess this equivalence of categories defined for you um, certain subcategories. So that I, I want to denote uh, the schematic B comma streak inside of the schematic, and uh, you also get the analytic B comma streak inside of the analytic. And um, so, how how you construct them? Well, they're, they're roughly given by up to some abuse of notation, just you kind of just take a streak push forward. So, and I guess I want to present it in this way because I guess you saw in David Hansen that you have to renormalize things, and I don't want to worry in this talk about renormalizations and things like this. Okay, so maybe you have a very naive guess. So naive guess. Maybe the first naive guess would suggest that, okay, you can try to take this category and apply Psi to it. 
And you can guess that this should be this. And well, actually, it's too naive, and and, and actually, it's kind of probably not the right thing. Um, and and this is, uh, I guess, due to the so-called reversal of topologies. Um, so we actually know more about the topology of this stack. Um, so BG actually, the set BG comes with a partial order, and this partial order defines for you a topology. And and we know that the Cudwitz stack has uh, the same topology as as the to order topology. And I guess uh, this is due to Report recharts and also work of his. And, uh, and on the other side, um, we know that the topology of BG is reversed. And I guess uh, for GLN, this is due to Hansen, and for some classical groups, uh, there's unpublished work of Hohmann and uh, the general case in one go is uh, due to Beeman. And uh, so this reversal of topologies in particular tells you that this cannot be the right thing because uh, you can see that if, if you really want that to be the right thing, things that would have done zero mass between them, uh, suddenly like they're forced to have, like all of their maps are going to be zero between them. So I, I, I don't want to be too specific, but I'm just saying this kind of tells you that this cannot happen. Um, so let me make a second guess. Uh, so, okay, there's actually a second functor, right? We could have, we took, we took lower shriek here, um, but we could have taken lower star, right? So we can also make, uh, We can also define in, in, a, in a similar way uh, some category um, UV star schematic and the analytic P star. Um, and, and then you can say, okay, if we have reversal of topologies, maybe we have reversal of categories. So, Another second guess is okay, maybe what's happening is that uh, this schematic B shriek should actually be uh, the analytic B star, and uh, that this schematic B star should be the analytic B shriek. Um, but there's actually another reason why this, this cannot be true. And, and the reason is again, the reversal of topologies. So actually on the analytic side, when you take the lower star, uh, suddenly your, your strata B, your Newton strata B, because it has infinitely many strata that are like smaller than it in the sense that they're in the closure, then this thing starts interacting with infinitely many strata below. Uh, whereas on the schematic side, when you take closure, it doesn't matter if you do lower streak or lower star, there's only finally many strata that it interacts with. Um, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep this, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, do something else about this. And 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 there's a third guess. I think I want this one. Uh, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> Just explain why I don't want this one. Okay, I'm gonna make a third guess. Well, the schematic theory has a Berthier duality. And uh, Berthier duality has something interesting, which is it switches, um, it switches um, DV star with DV shriek. And, and actually, it behaves like if it was cohomological duality, if you like look at strata by strata. And there's, a, there's another duality that does the same thing in the analytic world, which is the, the so-called bernstein slavinsky duality. So maybe I can try to think that the duality and bernstein slavinsky duality get exchanged. 
Um, and, and this kind of like suggests to me that maybe what I need to do is take psi of uh, this schematic V star. Uh, so I should define and try to, try to con conjecture this. Just as the Bernstein Solovinsky duality of the analytic, what do I want? V star. No, V shriek. Right. And so let me call this category um, the analytic MB. Um, and I want to call it in this way because kind of there's a second way in which I can construct this category. So the second way that I can construct this category is there are these famous uh, five Chelsea charts from here to here that also already appeared in, in David Hansen's talk. Um, and I have a, a map that I'm, gonna, I'm going to denote gamma B and I have a map that I, I want to denote sigma B. And another way you can construct this category is by looking at uh, sigma B shriek gamma star B of, uh, of red JB. So let me organize this third guess in a conjecture. Maybe big conjecture, big um, A psi exists, B psi of the schematic part, B shriek is the analytic and B psi of the schematic B star is the analytic B shriek. Um, and D, um, the knowledge is getting, get, get intertwined. So the schematic, psi, the analytic, um, what do I want this? I want very duality here. I want Bernstein's Levinsky duality. Okay, and uh, yeah, so this is how we're thinking about it at the moment. So this is our goal. And uh, let me, so I tell you where we're going and maybe now I have to tell you where we're at. Um, so let me just kind of talk about our approach. So approach, well, the first thing we do is we sort of want to stay, we want to, Kind of easily pass from the schematic world to the analytic world, and and there's like, uh, and uh, there's this Schultz analytification functor. Uh, he proves in the type of homology of them to be fully faithful. Um, so you have the C star. So again, I'm gonna be sketchy because I'm not telling you what categories we're working with, but. Some, somehow you have this VG um, and uh, there is this object, uh, VG big diamond. Um, so this is going to go to the analytic of VG big diamond. Uh, well, VG diamond takes our, our plus and uh, it just, Kind of takes its values on spec R. Um, 
And then the idea is to come up with a set object. So you know, now this is a small D stack and, and this function is fully faithful. And we want to find a third object that uh, I want to call Bungie Mare together with a map gamma here and a map sigma here to Bungie. And we're roughly thinking that the equivalence psi should be given by a sigma lower shriek of gamma star of this notification. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I guess, yeah, I was hiding something. There's like a kind of like those things that are locally uh, trivializable and those that are being locally trivializable. And of course, it is something that has to be addressed, but let me, yeah. Um, so the statement of the term is there exists blah diagram. I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to draw the diagram. Um, So we found a diagram like this of Cartesian square. Um, right. And so from this Cartesian square, you can actually already see that if you have something like a B big I, I mean big diamond uh shriek and uh you take sigma shriek gamma star of this you will get exactly the same functor as uh sigma shriek gamma star b which was the functor that was defining for us um it's gone oh that, well, the DI here is a function that was defining, defining for us this. Um, so we managed to find a space uh, that gives all of the five Schulze charts in one go. And okay, there are many ways you can do them. So you have to sort of say uh, how to do it. And I guess this is related to theorem B. I guess. I, 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 want, I still want to be gay and vague, but uh, let me just say something. So for torsion coefficients, gamma star, C star is fully faithful. So I'm not sure we're kind of considering the correct Cohomological framework, frame, framework. So I don't want to claim that this, okay, this is the correct functor, but I'm pretty convinced this is the correct space uh, because, okay, at least with torsion coefficients, we can prove that this is uh, a pretty faithful functor. 
Um, huh? Yes. You have to be composable, right? Okay. All right. So this is this is where we're at. Um, and yeah, let me kind of make some make some big remarks. Um, it looks, I mean, in our heads, there's kind of two 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 parts of the diagram. One is kind of controlling the gamma, and the other one is controlling the sigma. And okay, up to variations of what cohomology theory we take, we're kind of certain that we we have good control of what gamma gamma star is doing. But we have absolutely no control of what sigma is doing, and uh, actually we have not been able to like to prove that sigma streak exists. Um, so yeah, there, there's a big problem over there. Um, so there's kind of a, an interesting subtlety. So this is some small V stack, uh, but it's diagonal. We can prove that it's diagonal is representable in diamonds, but we can also prove that it's not representable in locally spatial diamonds. So the cosmology formalism gets complicated. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I also want to mention that uh, before I talk, we received an email from Guillaume that uh, he also had a version of CRM A. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'll get to that. Yeah, but very far in the talk. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bonus of the talk. Up? Up? Down? Here? Up? Uh. Yes, what do we know about C upper star? Um, I mean, okay, but in, in general, uh, I guess um, there's this function taking any kind of scheme to kind of its diamond. And if you take a kind of the naive theory, it tells your theory of the tau of X, uh, as in like you define it for finite type schemes and, and, and you kind of, kind of define every other thing by like start growing. Um, then, uh, as long as as long as this is some stack that this kind of has a nice like, so as long as it has a chart, um, like by a scheme that is still surjective because this doesn't always happen, but for in our case it does happen, uh, well, then it, C star is always fully faithful. Yeah. Okay. Eh? I don't know. It should not be an equivalence. Definitely, bungee mirror is bigger than the, the two objects. Right. 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 Yeah, I, I'll get to the definition. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I told you where we're going. I told you where we're at, and now I have to tell you um, how we got there. And yeah, that's related to the definition. A proposition. The following categories are equivalent. Mm 
uh, yeah, I guess this is R, R plus. I switch to cas over s with pop at p equals zero and the um, modules on down the drawer ring. Lyalu relative bounded drawer range. And so let me give an example. Um, right. So the idea is to take any of these two equivalent categories um, and yeah, again, okay. maybe I should put an RR. <laughs> um, yeah, the idea of how to refine my multi vector bundles in the second chain curve is take. I guess this any of these two equivalent categories and think of it as appreciative valuing categories and then shiftify. Um, so let me give a, a, an example of what kind of object you get. Um, I'm going to look at this matrix. Um, um, So this is a two by, by two matrix and the bit vectors of OC invert one over bar pi. And uh, what's the interesting thing about this matrix? Well, M is by conjugate um, to the identity uh, over Y zero infinity. It's not. It's not conjugate to zero infinity, um, one over p. Okay, I know that this is a space, and I'm saying one over p when like you can only invert when you're a ring. But please, kind of like let me know this. So, what's the point? Well, the matrix that you need to. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, the point is to sigma conjugate this to the identity, you have to use a matrix that has an essential singularity um, at p equals zero. So it it kind of this looking at this metamorphicity, it, it's allowing you to kind of identify things that in the five from ten curve look isomorphic, but you're actually giving different iso like metamorphic models. So this would be a, a different metamorphic model to just a trivial bundle. Okay, so by definitions, well. Uh, I guess I said this very early, but I want to call this category H took a one over P. And then one there is chiefification or stackification. Uh, one of those two equivalent categories. Uh, 
because earlier in the talk he said she puts blood. I get. You want me to put this? Maybe. Yeah, that's good. Right, right. You take the category of Stukas, just kind of like a venture bundle on wise infinity with zero closed. You take a phi module with Frobenius meromorphic at p equals zero. And you, yeah, right. Hmm? Well, yeah, I'll get to this. So we can, on product of points, we can control it. Uh, on other things we don't know, and we didn't try to specify it much more. I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so, okay. What is what is the advantage of, of, of looking at this object? Well, you have a uh, y zero infinity r, and then you have the inclusion of uh, y zero infinity r in here. This is the sigma inclusion, and at the level of local ring spaces, Morgan Laszlo uh, will tell you that you also have. Uh, a map like this, and you can just formally in a yeah, algebraic way um, to construct this uh, sigma star and gamma star functors, um, right? So you have a map of spaces, and and then you can you can pull back, and this gives you the map of stacks. Okay, so another definition. Uh, he has locally ring spaces. So, is it weird? Or, I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, a semi cellable uh, filter uh, vector bundle. Um, XRFF, the fact contained curve, is uh, an increasing filtration. Um, uh, of vector bundles in the fact contained curve. Such that what? Such that e lambda that I'm going to define as uh, e is more equal than lambda modulo e is more than lambda is semi stable. Oh, so of lambda. And I guess I'm going to call this category SS of. Uh, R plus. So this, this kind of definition appears in the work of Fox Schultze. Oh, I don't know. Do I fit another definition there now?
a definition. I'm going to find some substack block inside yeah. of here, which is going to be the substack with locally constant generic Newton polygon. So what do I mean by generic Newton polygon? Well, I have this map uh, from spec, R, spec WR to that space over there, and you can take a meromorphic vector bundle that I guess be locally looks like an isostuka. You pull it back to, to WR uh, one over P, and this gives you a family of isocrystals, crystals, and you can ask that the Newton polygon everywhere in there is uh, locally constant. And then uh, we have the following proposition, Answering one of the questions that uh, somebody asked. Um, if S equals spa R, R plus is a product of points, then I'm called. Analytic isostukas uh, So this is this is saying for product of points we don't have to shiftify, we just get the, the, the thing on the nose. And uh and maybe something you, you it's good to know is that this this objects that I refer to pro product of points. Uh, they are a basis for the V topology. So that's what I mean that we can control it in product of points. And uh, so what I mean is perfected spaces of the form product, like you take the R plus to be product of C pluses, where C pluses are open and bounded pollution sufferings of an arcana, but we can close an arc medium field. Uh, there's some index set. And then you, you kind of choose a family of pseudo uniformizers in here, and you call this VOD infinity, and then you define R to be R plus uh, invert VOD pi infinity. Um, so, and, and the point on, on locally constant things, uh, we, we really get this other category. Um, yeah, that I introduced somewhere over there. Yeah. So, actually, theorem A is some sort of Panakian enhancement of this proposition over here. Um, yeah. Right, you, you get WC, right? The, the, the C one over P. Right, right. Right, 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 right. I mean, the, 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 the proposition really comes down to uh, playing, uh, playing around with matrices and, and it, it, like this, I guess, uh, it's the kind of computations that the Kalei already does, Kalei and we already do uh, in, in their paper. Um, so the claim is that we kind of are grateful about doing this in families, and we are also careful about the exact structure, and so that it kind of passes to Tanakin formalism without problems. Um, okay, so this is all I'm planning to say about theorem A, and now I want to kind of pass the talk about theorem B. Uh, yeah, then you take uh, the, the, the Tanakian approach. So you take uh, 
you, you now all of those categories with a tensor exact structure, you have to be careful about that. And, and then you, you consider the kind of tensor exact functors from the category of representations of G into this object. Yeah. Say again? Oh, well, the point is, uh, if you take kind of functors, say again? Yeah, so this, uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so again, yeah, you can do that, and you'll get a infinite dimensional space. Um, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'll, I'll have time to explain everything I wanted to explain about theorem E, but let me try anyways. Um, so to prove theorem E, we actually, our approach to proof theorem B uh, is related to the following general question. Which is, if F is a small v-sheaf, what is values of so what is this category um, I guess we know that the, the category of virtual bundles in the fact and tail curve is a v-stack uh, and in particular this allows you to evaluate it on any v sheet and you will get again some kind of answer category of kind of vector bundles over f and uh, I guess we're particularly interested in uh, in the case in which f kind of comes from some non-analytic attic space. Um, so let me kind of set some notation. I'm gonna let A be a perfect ring over P. And uh, I'm going to take pi and a uh, non zero divisor with a equals a, a pi algebraically. And uh, I'm going to take b to be this completion, but really I want b to have the pyatic topology. Whereas I'm treating A as having discrete topology. Um, and finally, I want to take R to be E1 over pi. Um, so the pair, and I guess R plus is V. So the, the pair R plus is a perfected uh, Hover pair. And uh, okay, so this is the setup. And I'm going to be looking at different value points of one F. So let me do 
the names of uh, the people I know who have been studying this general question and answering in some cases. Just uh, a, a, a student, PhD student in, in Darmstadt. Um, so, in this context, Don FF, when you value it in the AA, this is the same thing as valuing DG on spec A. Um, me, you take analytic G Stukas and you value them in split AA. This is the same thing as taking the schematic Stukas and uh, valuing them in spec A. Uh, oops. Yeah, okay. Everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks. Okay. Uh, I guess one more thing is if you value on BB, then you get the, the category of G5 modules on uh, Y of R, zero infinity. So I, the difference between BB and RR plus is that, um, so maybe maybe it's better to just write R plus, R plus, R plus. Um, yeah, so somehow the fact that you're not inverting bar pi really, really does translate to not inverting bar pi over here in terms of five modules. And finally, um, one G of spiff one over pi, comma A, is uh, the same thing as G I search took us over R. So, we really, I guess, uh, I defined for you the category of isostukas and phi modules on the rubber ring, but actually the way we think about it is by evaluating just one G in this kind of B sheaf. Um, and, and, and that actually gives us a lot of control. For example, to talk about the exact structure, we really kind of study what's happening on kind of the underlying uh, topological space in here. Um, Let me make some drawings. What this perspective can tell you. Yeah, and we have the topology, and uh, plus we have the rapidic topology. Um, okay, so let me make a drawing. Um, turns out that this kind of family of theorems here gives you uh, a, a nice proof of the following theorem. So, theorem plus Riemann. Um, G, one G up, and let me give a sketch of proof. 
And it's going to be very sketchy because I'm going to make sketches on the board. Um, so the first thing that I'll sketch is how spec of V looks like for the seven one relation ring. Um, so this has uh, two points, one that is generic and one that is special. And I'm going to put colors to it. So the generic is going to be green. And the special point, I'll make it blue. And then I can take a map from spec V to VG like this. And uh, I guess this, this gives me a green point uh, in VG. And it also gives me a blue point in VG. And, uh, I guess just from, from I'm taking this, we know that uh, VG is larger than VS in the topology of VG of the Conrad stack. Okay. So this is how spec V looks like. And, and now I want to draw for you how, how uh, this gets kind of drawn in the world of color. So if you treat this as an analytic attic space, then you get three points. You have the generic point. You have kind of an extra rank two valuation point that I like to call the nearby cycle point. And, uh, and you can have a special point. Uh, and I guess this, this is the so-called vertical specialization. And this is the so-called horizontal. And, but if you pass to, to the world of bean sheaves, then it gets a little bit weirder. So you actually, uh, what? Uh, run to relation. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yes, rank one. <laughs> okay, well, it kind of gets weirder. That's the point. Um, um, so you have, again, the generic point. Uh, you have something that I like to call the meromorphic point, and, uh, and you, get, again, get a copy of a special point. And in general, this is a phenomenon that in Kruger's world, horizontal specializations kind of get factored into, into two specializations, one that I call the meromorphic specialization and one that I call the horizontal. Sorry, no, the formal specialization. And so, as I, as I said, I can take a spec B value point of BG and write that theorem over there it, get, it gets me a spill me value point of bungee. And, and you can pull the trick of like trying to figure out what colors go where. And uh, of course, G is going to remain being G. So you have this. And moreover, this is a vertical specialization and bungee is partially proper. So you also get this green thing over here. Uh, on the other hand, this is S, so it's still blue. And, and then you have to look at what happens at A. I guess this is kind of the key point. And if you look at this locus, well, this locus corresponds to speed of uh, R plus R plus uh, as in the notation over there. And, and so we know that we get five modules over Y zero infinity closed. Um, but I guess there, there's a classical theorem uh, uh, from Fagan Fontaine, that five modules over Y zero infinity is, I guess, uh, equivalent to five modules over Y zero infinity due to the classification of Richard Bundles in there. So, in particular, this tells me that this point has to be blue. And then you see that this point is larger than this point. So, in this picture, the blue ones are bigger. So that's how we explain the reversal of topologies in our approach. Um, but you can also learn something else about this diagram. So yeah, this is a this is a new proof. I mean, I'm adding some technicalities, but this is the essence of the proof. And 
there's a let me kind of talk about this other locus. So this is what, where I was heading. You have a, you have another locus, which is this red locus, and this corresponds to spin a one over p comma a. So when you give it the discrete topology, and and at and I already told you that when you value this on one G, you get isostochas. So meromorphic vector models really are, it's what's happening when you take one G and you try to evaluate it on this locus. But you also learn something from looking at this picture, which is the final completion always exists. So if you have an isostoka, you can always complete it at infinity and you end up having a map from the whole space. And uh, this motivates the following theorem. So Bungie Mare is BG Dagger. I have to tell you what BG Dagger is. Um, so BG Dagger inputs uh, a plus and it gives you BG of spec of the power bounded elements. So you've seen the small diamond and the big diamond and there's, there's a guy in the middle, which is the dagger space that kind of values this way. And the thing is theorem C implies theorem D. Um, yes, yes, you have to stackify, stackify yeah. Um, but I guess something uh, I, I, I discovered with Lorenzo when we were working on um, this uh, paper on two-way neighborhoods of local models is that actually, you can consider a variant of the notification function of Schultze, which is you can start on on the tile of your object. You can send it to the to the so maybe let me put Luis and Lorenzo. You can consider a version of the notification function to the big diamond, and and you can further restrict to the dagger, and this is stealthily faithful. And we can reinterpret the C star gamma star as precisely doing this by, by setting this. So I'm hiding a very important detail, which is at the lower points, it's clear that things extend at infinity. But in families, this is actually a, a, a much harder statement that we have to prove. So the key, the key to, to this theorem C is proving that any vector bundle on the fact and tin curve be locally extends at infinity. Um, and I'll just say this only because I'm over time. This in particular allows you to give a kind of complete classification of Stuka's or product of points in terms of BKF modules, even when the pool is not, not only P equals zero, but at any other intel. Um, so let me stop here.